What were Jesus' last words? Go out into the whole world and make disciples. This Catholic podcast is all about helping you say yes to the final and greatest invitation of Jesus, the adventure you were made for. Together, let's explore what business, education, organizational leadership, popes, saints, and scriptures say about fulfilling the Great Commission. Welcome, everyone, to this episode of Being and Making Disciples. I'm joined by my friend Ryan Verrett for this episode as we're going to talk about he and his wife's new approach to marriage ministry. I shouldn't say new. It's been around for a little bit and taken off. Witness to love. So, Ryan, thanks for making time to chat with us today. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me, Justin. So, Ryan, I'm wearing your shirt. You know, I'm a fan. I'm an ambassador. <laughs> Witness to love. It's been around for a little less than 10 years, but really taken off outside of your home in Louisiana to all across the U.S. and the world. Why do you think this new approach to marriage prep ministry has really grown and been and taken root in so many different places? Um, I think, uh, you know, just praise God. I think we uh, just rediscovered um, uh, sort of the, tr the treasure and gift of um, relationships and how um, Christ just, or God our Father just designed us to grow first and foremost in relationships. And that witness to love is rooted in a, in a process of, of couples choosing a mentor to walk with them. So they're not uh, assigned an expert. They're not um, kind of mandated to, to, to kind of be forced to look like someone else but they they have an opportunity where Christ kind of is sort of really invited in uh, to sort of personalize the formation that they need uh, for, mar for the sacrament of matrimony. So that's kind of the big picture. But I guess to say it specifically, I, a quote years ago, um, I heard a quote years ago from Father Benedict Rochelle. He would say rules without relationships lead to rebellion. But when there's sort of the, the let's say the rules of God, sort of the the, the morality and the ethics of life and being a Christian, being a Catholic, when that's uh, accompanied by a loving relationship of uh, faith formation and faith development and conversion really takes root. And so I think uh, just in general, the response that we've seen and the outcomes that we've seen um, is, is not, I guess, should not be a surprise because it's sort of the, just uh, sort of the process of how we grow. And so we're just applying uh, the authentic way that human beings grow into sort of catechesis regarding the sacrament of matrimony. Yeah, Ryan, I love the foundation in relationship. You know, I think, unfortunately, a lot of times in the church, we've lost sight of that, you know, and I'm guilty as charged at times. We implement programs and a lot of structure, but without relationship at the core. So could you maybe speak to a little bit about how um, the process in your guys' approach helps a loving relationship to develop between the mentor and mentee and the parish, which then allows them to be evangelized and catechized and all those good things we all want as people laboring in ministry in the church. I think I, to maybe to step back a little bit again, this is we're going into now the, the almost really the 10th year of um, this service to Christ in the church. And so it was something that we Mary Rose and I, um, sort of discovered in a sort of a, a moment of desperation. We both came from from backgrounds that uh, lots of redemption uh, within kind of relationships needed to uh, to take place. That Christ really needed to be welcomed into this place and and kind of healing from broken marriages to, and all these kind of different things that are just now just the normal part of people's lives. So, but at a at a at a parish level, when uh, we are um, we are welcoming and we're having kind of couples come into the, the or anticipating couples coming to the parish life with um, these uh, sort of inadequate relationship skills, this inadequate kind of family formation from their own lives. It's very difficult for them to, um, to just engage in the sacramental life of the parish, uh, the teachings of theology of the body. Let's talk about even, even uh, family planning. You know, if, if you're not coming from that background, it's impossible to say that within, let's say, a six month period that a cohabitating couple uh, that is outside of the church's teaching with regard to fertility and also maybe, you know, let's say, OK, with pornography, just to say that let's just kind of immerse them and maybe theology of the body, which, of course, is beautiful 
and just hope that they start going to mass. Uh, but I think we, many of us know that, that um, you can really, in most places in the United States, you can really go through the whole marriage preparation process and maybe not even go to mass even once. And so I think what we recognize, there has to be a better way um, to not only help them at a human level, but also provide a, a sequence and I think a, view, a, a, a vision for parish life that is welcoming them, that also reestablishes trust uh, in the church, uh, in, in Christ, uh, in the ministers of the church. And I think Witness to Love really does that because it, it, sort of play, it sort of spreads, let's say, the burden, and this is not a burden, but spreads the opportunity uh, for formation. It takes it off the hands of just maybe one or two people in the parish. Um, and it really incorporates into the whole community. And so it's it's much easier, I think, in that sense for, let's say, the Holy Spirit to be operative because it becomes a little bit tailor made. And I know I'd have to kind of flush it out a little bit more. But I think what I think to answer your sort of question is that witness to love provides a process that that not only gets the sort of the, the, the formation that an engaged couple needs to need and sort of the tools they have to continue on after the process, but it really provides a roadmap or renewal for parish life. Um, in our own communities, which is obviously, if you look around the United States, we definitely need at a moment where parish life just seems like it's in decline in many places. Yeah, and I, what I love about what you guys are doing is that it's not just a new book. I've got the book. It's great. I love it. But it's about a whole new way of thinking about marriage preparation. Um, you know, I think sometimes in ministry, we think, oh, we've got to look elsewhere. We've got to reinvent the wheel. We've got to do something totally outside of what we do in order to reach people. But you're, you guys are asking us to look at all these couples coming and just rethink of the way you do marriage prep. Because some folks might say, oh, marriage prep. But actually, it's a fantastic opportunity. So why do you think you know, engaged couples coming to the church are so ripe for evangelization? Why is that such a great opportunity for even parish renewal? Yeah. I, I love exactly what you're saying. Why are they so right for evangelization? So let's like just look at the big picture. You, you were you pointing out the workbook. That's an essential piece. I think people today are just so um, up to the ears in, let's say, just content. The amount of resources, information available to, uh, to people is amazing. And, and we know it. I mean, as a Catholic, we love reading great books. Uh, podcast, obviously like this one, there's so many great things there, but what's, what's, what's really missing uh, and, and with something that you can't just sort of type up and kind of press print and resolve the problems, even though I'm very much in favor of the church's teachings and reading uh, and, 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 and teaching per se. Uh, but what's what the problem that is sort of or the, the deprivation is the lack of kind of relationships and authentic friendships, which is so rooted and, and obviously the cl Catholic classical worldview that human beings know just relationships come out from Aristotle, taken up by Thomas Aquinas. And we see in John Paul II that relationships, virtuous relationships, relationships that are that are geared towards and directed towards Christ, which sort of this outpouring of love and sacrifice and generosity is really what these engaged couples need first. They that and, 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 and we say that we, we're in the sort of the, we have. Witness to Love is a catechumen approach to marriage formation, is an authentic catechumen approach very much to like, let's look, look at the Acts of the Apostles, Priscilla and Aquila, and the Acts of the Apostles who will welcome into the homes. What Witness to Love is, is a process that is not just dependent upon the parish, but the sort of the domestic church. It's the home being seen as a missionary outpost of evangelization and discipleship. <clears throat> in the United States, we have a model in, in many places particularly maybe the older communities where the parish is oftentimes seen as a fortress. Um, it's sort of, there's many obstacles to really kind of get in and there's many kind of stopping points. Now I understand that because not everyone is really maybe in the, the, the proper spiritual disposition to receive Holy Communion, but still there's, there, there are ways to really kind of be brought into grace, you know, actual sanctifying grace, actual grace, that maybe doesn't require necessarily being receiving Holy Communion this day, but sort of the the, the re repentance and the, con the steps of conversion beforehand, which can only take place in discipleship. And so we, I guess, our, our thought is is that engaged couples really need married couples to disciple them, 
in the pastoral kind of care of the pastor and sort of the sacramental life of the church. But I think when many of these engaged couples are coming from homes where not only their parents are divorced, but their grandparents are divorced and they don't have any friends who are really married, it's, a, it's just a great opportunity when you have, um, not through an assigned way, but through the generosity and kindness that just really is poured out among married couples in your parish to say, you know, hey, I'm willing to welcome into my home an engaged couple to come visit with us once a month. That has been a game changer. Um, a quote I like to use oftentimes is from Mother Teresa. She says, Mother Teresa says that kindness has converted more people than zeal, science, or eloquence. I, I just keep going back to that because I think it's from my children, ages 11 to one, to my wife, to my family, to my friends. The, the more we kind, we just really unleash a light in our communities uh, during the time where people are just really craving for that. So again, I think this is a, it's very simple. It's very not complex. And I think that why it's, it, this has been such a response to this kind of nationally now and internationally, because it, it's just a human movement and Christ is so interested in us being human beings. And I think the more human we are, the more Christ-like we are. And the more Christ-like we are, obviously, it really should work well into kind of Catholic discipleship and missionary moments. Amen to that, Ryan. You know, this approach kind of takes us back to the roots of the church and how evangelization is really meant to happen and how to invite people into our homes, have authentic relationship and friendship. I mean, I'm really excited to meet with our first mentees this this uh, Wednesday evening. Um, you know, it's it's probably the first time we've just invited someone into our home um, for the purpose of uh, relationship building and talking about Christ in a while, honestly. You know, so I think unintentionally even, even Catholics trying to evangelize, we build up that fortress mentality. So uh, Ryan, what do you think um, has been ineffective previously in the, in the church's approach to marriage preparation? Where have you um, in your guys' research and experiences, seen things go not so well? And how do you think Witness to Love kind of remedies some of those things? No, yeah, great question. Um, I think one of the first areas that we, we would see would, that would say would not go well has to do with just the human formation aspect of it, the virtuous life, virtue formation. Maris and I both came from a background where we just really valued the, uh, the, the catechism of the Catholic Church, obviously the John Paul II put in motion and the uh, the whole life in Christ sort of section, the morality based obviously on St. Thomas Aquinas and a classical worldview of human development. But I think uh, it, it's, it's really easy for a lot of us, maybe churchy folks to kind of get caught in just um, uh, appreciating kind of a great breakdown of prudence, justice, temperance and fortitude and faith, hope and love. But I think where, where we're missing the mark is that um, from, from, from a couple who has presented to 80 couples at a time at a Dossison kind of marriage prep retreat. This Now this is years ago before Witness to Love. Um, virtue cannot be taught from a podium. Um, it's, uh, it's not something, and if you struggle with any uh, moral issue in your life or any sin, uh, and we all have, that uh, it's, it's, um, you can do a lot of reading about how to maybe overcoming temptation and vice to things. But really until someone really uh, accompanies you and walks with you and you see um, a virtuous life being lived out, uh, that we always think that is sort of the, the first step in kind of hope. And so I think the first area of reconcil recon reconciliation that Witness the Love provided was not just kind of teaching virtue, but also just informing people in virtue by having someone model it to them. Um, that's been really important because, you know, as a, as a, as a, kind of a, uh, a classical, you know, Catholic guy, I, I really value the church's teaching and understanding that grace builds upon nature. But we really can't get to that grace content, which is so essential until our, the human nature is really in place. So virtue, obviously, coming from the Latin term vir, V-I-R, just means to be human or to be a man. Um, it's really that first step. And so I think in what we've seen is that going from in, engaged couples going into the homes of married couples who are striving to live the church's teaching in a day-to-day -day life. It's not seen in a stained glass all those times. It's not kind of just seen maybe in a parish setting, but in a home with kids, keeping things, just keeping things already, praying together, eating, making eye contact was really the first step. And that could, that cannot be learned from a podium. Maybe some of us 
can learn that way. I know one person who told me he was he read he was reading the catechism in college and he had a conversion in his dorm room. But besides that, most of us and God bless, he's a holy guy. But most people, he uh, most people really just need someone to really see that and to go along with him. The second thing that was really kind of uh, sort of a resolution is that in in witness to love, um, we discovered a process that we think really allows it incorporates couples into parish life. As I said earlier, the the traditional marriage prep in most places in the United States that are uh, that are using kind of a, a normal model, couples are just anticipated anticipating or anticipated by the church to just go to mass. In many places, they just they just don't. You can't you can't feed a sacrament on the starvation diet, you know. So the, so many of these couples really fall out of the church after the wedding day because there was there was never really kind of a an invitation that they heard and processed and received to have them go to mass. And so I think what we saw now is that these engaged couples are attending mass with the mentors that they chose. And it's beautiful. We see this all over. They set up times, you know, once or twice a month that they attend mass together. They go to holy hours and adoration chapels. They go on dates and things. But they're really, again, this kind of double dating is, is, has really been a process that continues on into mass attendance. And we see that after the wedding day where engaged, where newly married couples are choosing the mentor to be the godparents of their first child. Um, the third thing would be sort of marriage enrichment. Um, so, yes, there are we want engaged people coming to our parish, but the reality is, is that there are a lot more married people in our communities than there are engaged. And the best way to inspire, to encourage engaged couples to be married in Christ in the church is to help support our existing marriages. Marriage enrichment is probably one of the hardest things to pull off well within the life of a parish, um, just because it's always the same people that go. But in, in witness to love, it is really a two for one a model of evangelization and discipleship, where the engaged couples, the, the mentors that they choose, who respond in generosity, uh, the mentor couples are receiving many times for the first time in their life any type of marriage enrichment. These are again, these they're not always not really choosing couples like us. They're choosing these normal kind of good Catholics going to mass, but maybe just sort of leave right right after mass. And so again, so what, what we see here is a powerful opportunity. Uh, for marriage and enrichment, which can really, really um, intensify things in a good way in the parish and renew what's what's happening with regard to marriage. And then finally, the divorce rate. And I hadn't mentioned this earlier, but kind of at a sad note, the divorce rate among Catholics in the United States uh, is at 23 percent in the first five years of marriage. So the, the U.S. divorce rate is at 25 percent. That's just sort of everyone in general. So the Catholic marriage formation, marriage prep, really it, it, how it's been done traditionally has had a very uh, kind of small impact on the amount of divorces uh, that are, and marriage is being saved in the United States. In Witness to Love, though, we've seen is that because they, this, they were formed, this engaged couple was formed with this mentor couple, that this relationship has provided a, 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 a sort of a sounding board. And I'll give you an example of this. This the other day I was meeting with an uh, with a, a mentor couple and they said I will never tell you they said we're so we in, they they had mentored fifteen couples in in eight years six years and he said the other day the other night an engaged couple called us at three in the morning excuse me called them at three in the morning because they had their first child and the baby this baby was really sick and the baby was screaming and and the uh, the mom was up and she was exhausted. And the dad didn't want to get up, her husband, and they were just going back and forth. And they started arguing at three in the morning, or two in the morning, about they're both exhausted and out of their mind. Everybody who has a child knows that this happens. You kind of ask God, <laughs> you know, how is this supposed to work out? I, I remember that myself. Um, but uh, they uh, actually, they were so upset and with the things that they had said, and they felt like they couldn't go back to sleep until they called their mentor and just let them know. Can you coach us through this process? So you would think there's no parish I know of <laughs> that you can call at three o'clock in the morning when you're having marriage issues. Maybe some, and that would be amazing. But to know that there, this, that this engaged couple had this mentor couple that they call, and the mentor couple shared with me, they said, look, we told them all our kids have moved out. We're, we're kind of semi-retired. 
we just want to help out as much as possible. And we, they were so grateful to be able to be there and help that couple. That's just one example now of just kind of the thousands of, of couples that have gone through witness to love, the, the power there. And you know what? They, they got through that hump. But imagine though, if they didn't have anybody to talk to, if they were really just isolated, living in some place away from their families, how easy it is for just some really hard feelings to set in. So that's just one example. So I would say that whole process of kind of looking, kind of going in a positive way of sort of growth and development has really come out of witness love in, a, I think, a unique fashion. Yeah, that's that's a beautiful testimony right there. I mean, that's, that's all you really need to hear right there, because that's not covered in any workbook I know of. You know, oh, how to handle 3 a.m. phone calls. But the, the approach sets it up so those trusting relationships happen. And, you know, the, the aspect of the human development, therein lies the opportunity, because I was actually just talking about a stat the other day from a book called The Good News About Marriage. I don't know if you've read that book. You probably have The Good News About Marriage. Yeah. People are shocked by this. What percentage of people that get married, even with the divorce rate stats, want the best for their spouse, want what's best for them? 99%, right? Couples are going into marriage wanting to have a great marriage. They don't want to fail. They don't want to fail. There's no one, I doubt, there's not one in a thousand couples who's getting married saying, I want this to fail on that day. They don't want that. So the opportunity is in the virtue. That's why I love the way you guys have written the book and you've worked with John Cutterback. I couldn't believe that when I read that in the back the other day because I just did the man of the household study with some guys through his Lifecraft website, an incredible thinker just on theology of the home. And you guys talk about building virtue, basically. The whole book of the mentor mentee is about virtue because then by session four, you've built that relationship. See now, Ryan, that I'm on the other side as a men mentor, I'm seeing more and more how it fits together because by the time you get to session four or five, then you're having the conversation with father involved about theology of marriage, about natural family planning and theology of the body. You need to build up that human element first to then plant the seeds for, for the real cherry on top, which is theology of the sacrament, theology of the body. And that's what takes marriage into overdrive, you know, but it's got to build upon that nature. So I really think it's just really wise how you've built this program. Another thing I like for folks that might be skeptical, I have the same questions. They choose their own. What I love about the process is I feel like it puts everyone in their proper spot. The mentor is advising the mentees about married life. Father has his role in teaching the faith, being the primary teacher of the faith. And I definitely see that happening, that that dual element you mentioned about marriage preparation, but marriage enrichment for these mentor couples. So talk about parish renewal through marriage and family life. Yeah, that has been obviously the uh, as a Catholic, uh, we uh, want to see the church um, continue to flourish uh, in the United States. But I think it's really easy and not to spend a lot of time on, as I said earlier, that parish life. Catholic life in the United States in many ways that I think we're used to seeing it is really uh, either in transition or in, or in really decline. Um, but I think there is a there is a, an opportunity now that the Holy Spirit is teaching us. And um, I want to highlight something, just an example, because I think whenever we find good examples of discipleship and mis a missionary kind of thrust into society and something positive, I think we need to highlight it. Uh, we work with a lot of the dioceses outside of the U.S., and we we're, we're, we work with um, parishes in um, eastern and western Canada. And there's a diocese in eastern Canada uh, that was really for so long just obviously the kind of Catholic uh, center <laughs> for historically. Um, and but they are in such a let's say kind of a bad place with uh, the number of priests, the number of parishes, the dwindling number of Catholics and finances. Uh, the the bishop there, the archbishop there, decided has to do something really remarkable. He's saying that they that they are phasing out very in with the next couple of months months this sort of view that all that the church is just going to be using its limited amount of resources to provide programs and content to those existing people in the parish. They said they cannot even do that anymore because there's so many buildings and so many few people. So he said they're going back to the model where faith was really introduced into their nation in a missionary model where they see everyone in this whole region as a person 
that the faith should be shared with. And so that is, they, 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 there's only going to be masses in a few places. Now, it doesn't mean that we can, this is where we are in the United States. However, I was really inspired by this view that we're, we're not going, going to just sort of look in and figure out how to care for ourselves. There's a point that we have to do that for our families, you get that, and our children. Um, but when it comes to evangelization and discipleship, obviously we uh, need to, I think God will, I think the Holy Spirit is just really active right now in, in making us sort of look beyond what we're, our comfort zone. Um, and it, it, it's going to require a lot more than just some updates to policies and workbooks. As good as these, as important as these things are, it's really going to be the relationship. And so I think we really need to kind of expand who's our frontliners. And I think what, what, what great, what better frontliners do we have than our Catholic families or domestic church, those missionary outposts of the local parish who are in every neighborhood and in streets. Maybe, maybe they're only one of 50 homes, but still that um, they, they can do so much to uh, pre- kind of bring light uh, in a, in a moment that I think for a lot of us, um, depending on how you're feeling, can feel, you know, seem, appear to be dark. Amen, 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 Ryan. I love it. I love it. And I think you guys are part of that response as well, looking outward. So thank you for all that you and Mary Rose and your team are doing. Folks, I really encourage you to connect with Witness to Love, the website right here on my shirt, witnesstolove.org. And they have lots of great resources. Their team is very responsive in answering your questions. I encourage you to find out more, to consider bringing it to your parish or diocese, Um, talk to your pastor about it, or just reach out to Witness to Love for more info. Ryan, any other place they can find information about you guys, or should you really just head to the website? I would say, yeah, go to the website, witnesstolove.org, witnesstolove.org. And uh, uh, we're, uh, as a a nonprofit organization, people uh, support us, and they support opportunities for people to just kind of get to know what we do, which is such a blessing, you know, because we're not we're not burdened by a big bureaucracy and kind of all of this kind of craziness. But on our at our website, there's a, you can, there's an opportunity that you can order a free review set of materials, and that could be just sent to you or your parish or anywhere. So I would just ask anybody to just go online uh, to just kind of order that. Uh, you may have to pay a little bit of the postage, but you can just get those materials and you can understand the sequence. But the more that we can kind of share. Uh, I think this process, the more that we can envision a marriage, a part, sort of a marriage missionary movement that's going to really help to to enter us more deeply into the new evangelization that St. John Paul II envisioned for us. Thank you, Ryan. From your home in Louisiana to the ends of the earth, witness to love. Folks, if you haven't learned about it, go and learn more. It's helping uh, really change the way we feed marriage and family life. Thank you, Ryan, for the time. Thank you, Justin.